Hello everyone and in this video we're going to be talking about the tetanus toxin and how it is going to result in a increased muscle tone. Now when I, for an object that contains tetanus spores enters our skin, it can cause an infection that can result in a increase in muscle tone, which is the classical symptom of a clostridium tetani infection. Now here in red, I'm going to be drawing a, um, a damage to the skin. And when we have damaged the skin with um, a foreign object, it can result in a clostridium tetani entering our body. And here I'm going to be drawing the clostridium tetani. So these circles, black circles are resembling Clostridium tetani, and these clostridium tetani can produce the tetanus toxin. So here in small yellow circles, I have the tetanus toxin. And in purple, I have the motor neuron. So these tetanus toxins, they can then travel from the periphery into the interior horn of our spinal cord. And then they can interact with the interneuron located there. So if we were to zoom up to our interior horn of the spinal cord, we would see a motor neuron and a wrench out cell. So here I have the tetanus toxin that, have, that has traveled from the periphery to the interior horn. And from the motor neuron, these tetanus toxin can then go to the Renshaw cell. Okay, so they can infect the Renshaw cell. And what is important to know about the Renshaw cell is that it ha is going to house the neurotransmitters GABA and glycine. So here in in a big vesicle, it is going to have neurotransmitters GABA and glycine. What is important to know about these neurotransmitters is that it is going to interact with the snare protein. So in X, I'm drawing or resembling the snare proteins. So normally GABA and glycine can be released into the uh, synapse with when they're interacting with the snare proteins. Okay, and you might know that GABA and glycine, they're inhibitory. So they're going to decrease uh, muscle tone. They're going to act to decrease muscle tone. That's what their function is. The tetanus toxin it is going to inhibit the snare protein. So it's going to cleave the snare protein, which is going to ultimately prevent the release of GABA and glycine. And so if we don't have the release of GABA and glycine, it is going to result in a increase in muscle tone. So that is why when we have a clostridium tetani infection, it can result in an increase in muscle tone.